Hello and welcome back my friends. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I make videos about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to help educate, raise awareness, and share my experiences and advice living with this condition. Today I'd like to share with you my early signs and symptoms of AGDS. I honestly had a very normal childhood and there really weren't too many obvious signs that I had a health condition, but of course, hindsight is 2020. I think the first sign would have definitely been my hypermobility. As a child, I would sometimes sleep in very contorted positions. My mom used to try to move me because it looked unhealthy for my joints, but I would cry when she did because that's just what was comfortable for me at the time. I was also significantly more flexible than my peers at school. It even earned me the nickname Gumby by a teacher. I had a shoulder and an elbow dislocation when I was a toddler, but it was caused from falling backwards out of a chair, which also caused a few hairline fractures in my arm, so the injury was physically traumatic enough that the dislocations didn't seem unusual. During school, I remember that holding my pencil properly was very uncomfortable, and I just couldn't do it. I had many teachers try to correct my grip, but I always found it to be painful and reverted back to a more comfortable grip. I still hold my pencil weird to this day. I also couldn't hold my arm up for very long when wanting to answer a question in class, so I would support my raised arm with my other hand. It may come as a surprise that I didn't get injured too terribly much growing up, but I think that's partly because I was a very cautious child. When I would get hurt in sports, there was never really a clear cause of the injury, just that something hurt after I did something pretty normal, so I always chalked it up to me just being much thinner and weaker than my peers. Having poor proprioception, proprioception is the ability to perceive where your body is at in space, is associated with EDS, and I was definitely uncoordinated. I tried most sports and was pretty terrible at all of them, with the exception of martial arts. I wouldn't say that I was a talented or skilled martial artist, but I learned how to use my hypermobility to my advantage to be successful. I do remember always seeming to be nursing a random injury or two during my years in martial arts, though. Around age 12, I started to develop POTS-like symptoms. If you don't already know, POT stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome, which is when your heart rate increases significantly when going from laying or sitting to a standing position, which will make you feel very dizzy, lightheaded, hot and sweaty, make your head pound, make it feel like your heart is beating out of your chest, make you lose your vision, and sometimes make you lose consciousness. POTS is a very common comorbidity seen with EDS. Because my POTS-like symptoms never led to me actually passing out, I didn't complain much and I just learned to deal with it. And I say POTS-like because I was never officially diagnosed with POTS. My family was the type that didn't go to the doctor unless something was seriously wrong, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Some other common EDS comorbidities that were discovered when I was a teenager were mild scoliosis and Raynaud syndrome. Scoliosis is an abnormal curvature of the spine, and Raynaud's is a condition in which the blood vessels contract and spasm inappropriately in your hands and feet in response to cold. It usually presents as painful white or purple fingers and toes. I also had extensive orthodontic work done, including having eight healthy teeth pulled in order to make room in my mouth, as well as two sets of braces. I also had an extremely high vision correction. I couldn't recognize people a mere few feet in front of me without my glasses on. Both dental crowding and extreme nearsightedness are very common in EDS. My skin features of EDS, the unusual softness, easy bruising, and mild stretchiness, were present in childhood, but nothing so unusual that would make me or my parents concerned. I have some very early memories as a toddler of someone calling me Peaches or her Little Peach because she said that my skin felt like peach fuzz and I was always covered in little bruises. I think it was one of my mother's friends. As far as chronic pain is concerned, I luckily didn't experience much at all in childhood. My mom tells me that I used to cry at night sometimes due to pain in my legs that she was told was just growing pains. I also remember getting this recurring chest pain pretty often as a child, and I still get it as an adult, just not nearly as often. I think it's related to a rib or possibly the muscles between the ribs because it's in the exact same spot every time. I didn't develop what I would consider to be chronic pain though until I was about 24 years old. So in hindsight, there were plenty of signs of EDS in my childhood if you knew where to look, but unfortunately, like most people, my family, friends, teachers, and I had never heard of EDS, so no one knew any better. And that's a big reason why I created this channel, because EDS still seems to be a condition that very few people have heard of, and I want to help spread education and awareness about it. What were your early signs of EDS? Let me know down in the comment section. If you thought this video was helpful, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, and don't worry, it's completely free. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time!